Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the Transformers Netflix War for Cybertron Trilogy Voyager Class Soundwave. Let's start off by taking a look at the packaging and then we'll get into the review. So of course up front we have an open window displaying the figure in the packaging. We can see Soundwave, his cassettes, laser beacon ravage. We also see his accessories on the far side there. Of course we have Decepticon Soundwave. We have the Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy logo. We have Transformers on the side along of course with the Netflix, Takara Tomy, and Generations logo. On this far side here, we do have a really cool artwork shot of Soundwave with his shoulder cannon. We have the Netflix logo at the top and a very cool Decepticon symbol. I do apologize about the glare. On the back, we have several product shots. Of course, starting on this side, we have a really cool product shot of Soundwave in his robot and cassette player mode. He transforms in 19 steps. We have a product shot, of course, of Ravage in his wolf dog mode. He transforms in 7 steps. Of course, we have another product shot of his cassette mode. Of course, you do have two product shots of Laserbeak in his bird and cassette player mode, and he transforms in 4 steps. And the final side, it's actually been quite a while since we've seen this artwork. Of course, this is the Earthrise artwork, but stylized in the Netflix version. Overall, that looks quite cool. Of course, quite a few characters here you can see Optimus, Wheeljack, Hound, the Quintessons, Megatron, and a lot more. And of course we have Netflix at the top, the uh, Authentic logo, and War for Subtron Trilogy at the bottom. And that is pretty much it for the packaging, so let's now get into the review. Here we have Netflix Soundwave in his robot mode. Let's start off by taking a look at the details, starting at the very top with that head sculpt, some really cool silver for the entire battle mask, and side sections of the face, really cool dark red for the visor eyes, and some dark blue for the main helmet section. There is actually some light piping at the top of the head, so if you do shine light over the top of Soundwave's head, his eyes will illuminate a really cool menacing dark red or almost maroon color, which is a pretty cool feature. As for, of course, the shoulder done in that dark blue and silver, some light gray for the form, and some really nice uh, sculpting and detailing, really cool mechanics mechanical and wire detailing there. Some dark blue for the hands, as for, of course, the other arm, it's the exact same design and sculpt. Minus the hand, it's actually a sculpted in sort of pointer finger, and what you're supposed to do is actually have the finger press the button here and open up the cassette deck so it can, of course, release or eject laser beak and ravage, which I think is a pretty cool, playable, fun feature. This is also present on the Legacy Siege and Shatterglass version. I will bring out the Shatterglass version in just a second for a mold side-by-side -side comparison. If you actually do look on the inside, it's actually a sculpted in detailed uh, cassette so it's supposed to look like there's one already in there which I think is pretty cool hopefully you can see that that looks quite cool and just closing this right up there's a really cool Decepticon symbol in the center really nice yellow trim with some orange there as well and I really do like these little details in the corner that looks quite cool. As for, of course, the crotch and waist, there's actually a faux control panel or console section, so it's supposed to resemble the actual one, so this is the one you actually use for the boombox mode, but this is for the robot mode, so usually faux pieces, unfortunately, sometimes do cause some problems for either the robot or the alt mode, in this situation, I don't really think it causes any problems, I think it works perfectly fine, which I'm really glad, so of course, we have the forward, back, pause, and the play, um, and I'm assuming maybe the power button are there, unfortunately, of course, it's not an actual button that you can press, but still a pretty cool detail in my opinion. As for, of course, the top of the legs, mostly done in that gray. Some really cool silver and orange detailing there. Some vents. Really cool, kind of a little bit of nut and bolt there, which looks pretty cool. Some light gray for the feet. And as for the back, there's actually a bit of a story back here, but, um, First things first, of course, overall, really not that much hollowness or waffling. Overall, pretty clean. Of course, we actually do have some mech tech ports. So if you want to add some fossilizers, some of the modulators like Airwave, Ironworks, any of them, you can add them here, which is a pretty cool feature. Or you can store the accessories back here if you want to the shoulder cannon or the handheld blaster or the pistol. Either of them, you can do that. There is a bit of hollowness in the forums, but that really doesn't bother me that much. So getting to the stories, so if you do pay attention to my community posts, I actually did purchase another version or another copy of Netflix Sound we have about a little bit over a week ago. Um and you might be wondering, if you don't know, why did I buy two? Well, um, this is actually the second version. So the first version, when I bought it, I did make a community post saying, oh, you know, review coming soon, like usual. But then I opened it, and unfortunately, it did have a defect. It actually had this entire piece and pin here missing. It was completely not on the figure. And I typically do buy, buy brand new figures. I'm usually not really that used Transformer guy. It kind of bothers me. I really like them brand new. That could be kind of snobby of me. I don't know. It's just my opinion. Some people don't care. I personally really like them have uh, to be new in box. That's just my opinion. But um, 
It was brand new. I opened it and this pin and this piece here were missing. I'm pretty sure it was on this arm. So of course I got my money back and this was my replacement. I bought it from a different seller and it, as you can see, it, it does include the pieces. The reason why I'm telling you this is just for two reasons. To let you know why the review was delayed because I said the review was coming soon, like over a week ago. So you might be wondering where it, where is the, when's, when's, when's the review coming? Well, now you know why. Um, the second reason is to warn you because some people are still looking for this mold now. Some people don't want the shower glass sound wave. They still want this original Walmart exclusive and Netflix sound wave. And that's perfectly fine. I did pay a pretty penny for this. I paid like, uh, around $155 for this figure. And yes, that is quite a bit of money, but I'm, I had some spending money around. I was like, yep, yeah, sure. I'll go for it. Um, so just a bit of warning for people who still, who still want this mold when you get it either used or new, make sure on the back that both of these pieces are present because they could not be. Again, this uh, problem, this defect could just be one copy, just one fluke, or it could be several copies. I do not know. I never heard of this problem before now. I was surprised. It shocked me. But again, just kind of wanted to give you a warning just in case you are on the market for this figure. But of course, moving on to the articulation. Um, the head can look up and down, side to side. The arm can move out and in. There is, of course, a forward and back motion as well. I do want to say a lot of the joints on this figure are actually very squeaky, so I do apologize about that. There is a bicep rotation. Of course, there is a uh, way past 90 elbow bends, and there is unfortunately no wrist rotation, but if you want to, you can actually move in the hands. Um, that's really due to transformation, but if you do move the arms out of the way, there is a fully unhindered waist rotation. If you do want to, you can flip these little flaps up, that really is to accommodate the articul uh, articulation of the legs. You can also move that panel back up there. So there is a kick forward to a pretty good degree. There is a kick out, which that's uh, full splits, and a kick to the back, overall pretty good. And there is a swivel a knee bend, and an ankle pivot. I think the ankle pivot could be a little bit better. I really don't think anything was stopping them from doing that. But other than that, pretty good articulation. Again, the joints are actually pretty squeaky on my copy. That could just be mine. I don't know. Let me know if you have that problem with uh, your figure. It really doesn't bother me. Um, of course, the ankle pivot and wrist rotation really wasn't a surprise to me because I actually got the shower glass version, uh, which was the second version. This is the original. I got the second version of this mold first. So I knew what to expect. I was not surprised whatsoever to see this. Again, kind of unfortunate that there is no ankle pivot. I, there is just very limited. And that is pretty much it for the details and articulation. Let's quickly get into the accessories. So they're the exact same ones that came with the shattered glass version. So first up is his shoulder cannon, which overall looks pretty cool. It would have been nice if they had maybe painted the bullets because on the shattered glass version, they're actually detailed in this really cool metallic uh, blue, which I really do like. I really like that. So maybe they could have painted them in like a lighter blue or a black or something. I don't know. Uh, but you can, of course, just plug this into that port at the top, which I think looks quite cool. You can, you know, angle it out or straightforward either way. And as for its next accessory, it's the classic handheld pistol. And this is also a blast piece compatible. You can plug it into either hand. I actually typically uh, prefer to have uh, the handheld blaster on the opposite side of the shoulder cannon. That's just my opinion, just to have them a little bit more spread out. As for his final weapon, this I do not like. I will show you it uh, very briefly, but um, this weapon first came out with the Siege Soundwave a while back. Um, and there is a bit of a feature, which I'm not going to show because I don't like it. A lot of people don't like it, but you can combine this weapon, uh, the shoulder and the pistol, uh, and you can combine them to form this huge rifle. That main feature was really for Siege. I'm pretty sure in the Legacy uh, and the uh, Netflix and Shagless um, instructions, I don't think it even ever showed the feature. Of course, all of the versions came with this weapon. They still have the weapon, but they never showed it in the instructions. I don't think I don't think it showed it in this figure's instructions, so I'm not going to show it. I also personally do not like the feature. I <laughs> Let me know if you do in the comment section down below. I've showed it before if you want to see. I'm pretty sure I did show it in uh, the Legacy Soundwave, that repaint, redeco. Of course, that one really is just the Siege one, just none of the battle damage. So if you want to see that huge rifle thing, I'm pretty sure I showed in that review. As for this one, I'm going to leave it out because I personally really don't like it, but you can plug it in his hands, which I typically, that's typically what I do. Um, 
and I might actually just put it on its back or off to the side because I do not like that weapon. But that's pretty much it for accessories. Let's now move on to one quick mold sound wave comparison. So here he is with the shattered glass sound waves. As you can see, of course, mold wise, they are quite similar. The only change between these two here is the head sculpt. As you can see, of course, he has the bandana. Um, other than that, of course, as you can see, accessories, the legs, the arms, everything is um, that I know of the same. Um, it's just a heavy redeco. And I do have to say, so a lot of people were worried with this Shattered Glass Soundwave because a lot of people, uh, when we were having rumors and leaks uh, about a Shattered Glass Soundwave, a lot of people were hoping it was going to be the Netflix Soundwave Molt. And it turned out to be, which is good. But a lot of people worried, were we going to have the yelling problem? Because yeah, as you can see, most of this figure is white. I do apologize if there is a blare or if this figure is exploding because it's mostly white and I have a white background. Apologies about that, but a lot of people were worried about the yellowing problem with the whites. And I did want to update you um, so far with this figure, with this um, version, this copy of the figure, mine, there is zero yellowing. So if you're wondering, if you're still on the fence about buying this, if you're still worried about it, on my copy, there is no yellowing at all that I know of. I mean, I look at my figures quite a bit. So I do stop motions. I, you know, mess with, uh, mess around with them, you know, to put them in poses, all that sort of stuff. So I, that I know of, again, there is no yellowing. So hopefully um, other copies are not that way. But again, um, between the two, the only change is that head sculpt. Of course, as for the cassettes, that is a bit of a different story, which I'll get into in just a sec. But of course, just kind of a side view, side profile there. Overall looking pretty cool and do let me know in the comment section down below What is your preferred deco or version of this mold and in my opinion? I really don't know because a bit of an odd story is to be honest I actually was never really expecting to get this Netflix sound wave I was uh, like I was planning on getting the shower gloss version and that was I was thinking this is gonna be my go-to Boombox sound wave for quite a while, you know, maybe they'll make an, a modern-day uh, mainline sound wave sometime soon Maybe in legacy evolution or whatever comes next maybe in studio series who knows uh, but I was really thinking this is gonna be my, my go-to one but then I was like okay it turns out I'm gonna get it so I'm a bit surprised I was kind of caught off guard um I don't really know. I think they both have pros and cons. I do like the, how they painted the bullets. I think that's probably one thing that is definitely a plus over the other one. <laughs> of course, that's a very minuscule detail that could, couldn't matter to you. It kind of matters to me. I think it looks better. I also really do like the metallic silver, uh, metallic blue, I mean, on the handheld weapon and, of course, the uh, shoulder cannon. I think that just looks a little bit better. I think the solid blue, yes, is probably more accurate to the G1 show. I think it just adds a little bit more interesting detail to the weapon. Weapon. Again, just my opinion, and they both do come with that dreaded pistol, which just is in solid gray and white. I do not like that pistol. I think a lot of people don't, but that is it for this comparison, and that's pretty much it for Netflix Soundwave in his robot mode. So what you're actually going to do is we're actually going to move on to the uh, cassettes, uh, Laserbeak and Ravage. So here we have the mini cons or cassettes that are included with Netflix Soundwave. Let's start off with Laserbeak. So I'm actually going to move Ravage off just for a quick second. Here we have Laserbeak overall looking very, very cool. I really do like the details on the wings. Tons of silver, black, red, really cool mechanical kind of electric detailing. And I really do like the head. It's actually quite of an odd shape. I like the yellow for the eyes, the beak looking very small really tiny Decepticon symbol on the top of the head, if you can see that, really tiny. Of course, this entire kind of booster section done in silver, some more red there, overall really well sculpted. And I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure these sections here are actually Blast Beast compatible. Again, I could be wrong. As for, of course, the bottom, we do have the little uh, legs there, which are pretty cool. I do quite like that. And overall, a very good looking laser beak. Let's now move on to the details of Ravage. And overall, I do have to say, I don't really like this mold. I actually, of course, recently reviewed the Shattered Glass Soundwave not too long ago, you know, a few months ago. Um, and I did say in that review, I just, I'm not a big fan of this mold. I think they should definitely make a new Ravage. You know, they are making the, um, the Frenzy and Rumble again in the 86 line, I think they probably should redo Ravage because I really do like the Laserbeak uh, mold, whether it be the Shattered Glass, the Netflix, the Siege, any version, it, it's a good mold. It's a fun transformation. It's it's simple, but I actually really do like it. It's a good fidget toy. This one, the transformation is not that fun. And just overall, it's a really weird design of a wolf. He's supposed to be, you know, slick, stealthy. He's supposed to be fast. It looks too blocky and chunky. That is just my opinion. I don't want to be negative 
negative. It is fun. I'm really glad they included it, but just, I never really liked this mold. I just never really liked it, but of course, design-wise, we do have the wolf head, of course, the ears. We have some silver for the eyes, which looks pretty cool. Unfortunately, there is no mouth articulation. Just want to let you know that, but we do have some blasters at his hind legs, some more details from the front. I actually really like how you can see some cassette detailing um, in this mode. You can see like a 60A, and there's an MC, and there's some more on the hind legs. Of course, we have the little legs here, just done in gray, overall looking quite cool. Of course, the bottom view there, top view overall. Again, just not a fan. As for, of course, articulation, the uh, neck is just on a hinge, which is really due to transformation, so it can look up and down. As for the paws, they can hinge forward and back, and the little legs are on a hinge, but I would be careful because they're just like on a little mushroom peg, so uh, this is just from my experience. Typically, when I hinge them, they typically do pop off. Of course, they're not broken. You can just pop them back into place, so I would just be a little bit careful, but there is a hinge at the little paw or leg, and other than that, that is pretty Pretty much it for articulation and of course moving to laser peaks articulation the neck is on a hinge so there's a hinge there there's also a hinge at the head as for of course the wing there's a hinge at the wing and if you want to i guess you can use this booster section as articulation but again that's really due to transformation and you can have the legs more spread out if you want to count that as articulation but that is pretty much it for the cassette mini cons for the articulation and details let's now get down to a few comparisons Harrison. So let's actually start off with laser beak, laser beak and then we'll move into Ravage. So first up, here he is with the Siege version. And um, uh, mold-wise, I'm pretty sure the only change is the head, which you can obviously see is a pretty good, big difference there. Other than that, I'm pretty sure really just design-wise, uh, molds, I'm pretty sure other than that is the exact same thing. And just quickly adding in, here he is with the Shattered Glass version of laser beak. Um, and of course, these two, I think, are the exact same figure, just, of course, a heavy uh, change in deco. And let me know in the comment section down below uh, of these three, which one is your personal favorite. I probably have to say my personal favorite of the laser beaks is probably the Netflix one. That's just my opinion. But overall, just having them kind of two, we have the Shutter Glass, we have the Siege, and then we have the Shutter Glass and the Netflix and that is pretty much it for the laser beak comparisons. Let's just take these off to the side. Let me bring in Ravage. And here is Ravage with the Siege version and the Shatter Glass version. And yeah, we got three Ravages up in here, a mold that I just don't like. Um, I can already say my personal favorite is the Shatter Glass version, just the deco I like the most, but again, Mold-wise of all three of them, I just don't like it. But comparison-wise, I'm pretty sure as the mold of just all three, I think it's the exact same thing. I don't think there is any mold changes. I think just the deco, which is it. Obviously, you can tell that with the Shatter Glass version. These two, I think there is just a, a slight subtle change. I think there's some more added uh, silver paint apps. There's also some purple, which I actually really do like that purple from Siege. Um, I think they probably should have kept that. But overall, there we go. Again, let me know in the comment section down below of the three versions of Ravage. Which one do you like the most? The Shutter Glass, the Siege, or the Netflix? Because again, obviously my favorite is the Shutter Glass. That's just my opinion. And I definitely think we are uh, <laughs> ready and due for an update of Ravage. That's just my opinion. So let's now move on to transformation. I will actually, of course, first transform... Um, Soundwave into his cassette player, and then I will transform the cassettes, and of course we will take a look at the details of both. Now for transformation into the cassette player or boombox alt mode. So first what you're going to do is fold in the hand so there is a crevice on the inside of the form. You're just going to flip the hand in just like that. Do the same thing on their side. So just flip the hand in just like that. Then what you're going to do is rotate the waist all the way around. So you can then flip to the back of the figure open up this compartment and then flip the head in just like that and then you can close it up just like that and then what you're going to do is rotate at the biceps so the hand is now facing the back just like that and then you can use this hinge here just untab it from the main body there is a tab and there is a slot you're just going to tab that into place just like that and then of course the same for the other shoulder but then there is a slot right there and a tab right there so you're going to tab the arms together 
just like that, just to line everything up. Make sure that it's all nice and secure into place. And then what you wanna do is go to the entire control console, lift this up, and then you can bring both these panels out from underneath. So just bring those out and we can leave it that way for now. Then what you wanna do is open up these uh, little hole panels um, on the back of the legs, so just hinge these out, flip this out just like that, and then you're going to fold in the foot. And there is a peg on the inside and a port on the bottom of the foot, and that will just plug right into place just like that, and just make sure that's all nice and secure. There we go. Do the same thing on the other leg, so just flip that out, fold in the foot, and that will just close over the entire foot and leg, just like that. You can then rotate at that swivel joint, and then there is a slot there and a tab right there. It's just going to tab right into place, just like that. Do the same thing on the other leg. Tap that into place, and sometimes they can stick up so off camera, of course, I'll try to make sure those are nice and flush. And then there is slots on those panels right there and tabs right there that will just tap right into place, just like that. And there we have Soundwave in his Boombox cassette player alt mode. But of course, before I take a look at the details, I do have to transform the two cassettes that are included. So let's start off with a laser beak. So first up, what you're gonna do is get this entire booster section, just fold this back, fold the head back as well collapse the wings, go to the bottom side, fold the legs in, and there we have Laserbeak and his cassette. Of course, again, I will take a look at the details in more depth um, after the transformation of Ravage. So let's transform Ravage. What you're gonna do is go to the bottom, you can fold the head in, just push that through. And I do apologize if the legs pop off, I'm just usually very unlucky with this type of figure. Flip the little legs forward just to get some added clearance. You can then flip the back legs in and then fold that up just like that. Do the same thing on their side. So just hinge the foot up and then hinge the entire back leg up just like that. And then you can get this entire section here, hinge this forward. And then what you're going to do is hinge these sections up like that and like that. So there we have the back all done. And just to get some added space, of course, you really don't have to do this. Just to make it a little bit easier, I actually kind of push them out again just to get some space for the front. So then what you want to do is do the front legs. These will just hinge up into place like that. And then what you want to do is just push the back legs in. And then you can push the front legs in as well. And there we have Ravage in his cassette mode as well. And that is pretty much it for transformation. So let's now take a look at the details of Soundwave's Boombox alt mode. And of course the cassette's alt mode. Here we have Netflix Soundwave in his cassette player boombox mode. Let's start off by taking a look at the details. Starting at the very front, we have some really nice gold kind of orange highlights stripes there. We actually do have an L and an R, of course, for the left and right side. Some really cool silver, some light blue. We actually do have, I'm assuming, a headphone jack right there. We also do have uh, record and bats in there and the white text. I think that overall looks pretty cool. We do have the entire control console picked out in silver, the forward and back arrow, the play. And I'm assuming probably these bottom two are like maybe the record or the power button, something like that. We do have the entire cassette tape deck done in the really cool yellow outlining, a very classic Decepticon symbol right in the center, really nice white outlining to that, and the purple as well. And I really do like all these details in the corners, that actually looks super cool. Of course, up top we do have some light gray, this little button here, which actually does open the cassette tape deck, which is pretty cool. And if you do look on the inside, there's some really nice sculpt work in there. It actually looks like there's a cassette already in the back, which looks quite cool. Moving to the side overall, pretty good side view in my opinion. Some really nice silver, some orange there, looking quite nice. And in the back we do have the arms, which I'm kind of used to. That's exactly how they ended up with the Shattered Glass version, so no surprise there. Let's actually now move on to the accessory storage. So, um... I do cut a little bit of slack with this Soundwave mold with the Shadow Glass and the Netflix version because it is quite hard to store, you know, three accessories on a cassette player or a boombox. It's, there's really not that many places you can put them. So I do cut a little bit of slack, but these accessories actually do serve sort of a purpose. So if you didn't already notice, unfortunately, this figure does have a tendency to slightly lean back without the accessories. But if you do add the shoulder cannon and the hand blaster, it actually does slightly prop it up or, of course, stabilize it, which is actually quite nice. So if you do get the hand blaster, you can 
and collapse the barrel. Just push it in like that and you can put it on either side. It does not matter. Just make sure this piece is facing up. So there is a Mectic port and use the handle. Just plug that in just like that. And then, of course, you will get the shoulder cannon, plug it in on the other side, and that actually helps it uh, stabilize and have it a little bit more propped up, which is actually quite nice. I actually really do like that. As for, of course, the accessory, I just do not like you plug this right in the middle. That really doesn't serve much purpose, which has been unfortunate. But other than that, that is pretty much it for the accessory storage. Again, it doesn't look that great from this view, not really that well concealed, but it does serve a purpose, which I'm actually quite happy about. So moving on to the main feature that we always really like to do, you can store a cassette inside Soundwave, so do press this button. I'm actually gonna grab a laser beak, just plop them right in the tray, and you can close that up, and I think that looks quite cool in my opinion. I actually really do like the clear plastic. You can see all the details of laser beak's wings. You can see his beak, and I really do like that Decepticon symbol. I actually uh, slap bang in the center right on top of his beak, which is pretty cool, so overall, Really like that feature, always fun to do. And if you do press the button again, it will actually open up. And I'm actually really glad with this one. I think the tolerances on the door is actually pretty good because I think it might've been either the Legacy or the Shatterglass version. Unfortunately, um, typically when I would put a mini kind of there, it would usually get jammed or kind of stuck. I can't remember which version it was. It was one I reviewed recently, but this one seems to be quite smooth. So I'm actually really happy about that. You can take it out and that is pretty much it for the main feature. Let's actually now move on to the cassette. So I'm going to take a look at the details of Laser Beacon Ravage, then get some comparisons. So I'm actually going to move um, Soundwave off to the set for now. I will bring him back in just a second for comparisons with Shattered Glass Soundwave. So let's start off with the Laser Beak here. Tons of really cool details. Love all the gold the silver, the black, actually some metallic blue and orange. It's so much to pick out. It looks super cool in my opinion. I love the beak actually right in the center. Some people really don't like the hinge. That's agreeable, but I actually kind of like the little triangle beak outline. Some silver there. On the back, we do have the little feet, which is pretty cool. And there is a uh, peg or a, p a post there. So if you want to, you can use the main siege um, gimmick, of course, this is the Netflix version, the main or the original uh, version of this mold. The main gimmick was you could actually attach them to Siege Soundwave's uh, forearms and his shoulders. That was the main gimmick. I typically don't do that gimmick um, really at all, but it's a feature if you want to. You can put them on the Netflix one if you want to, but I don't even think they show that in the instructions. But overall, detail-wise, I am quite impressed. Let's actually move on to a few comparisons. So here he is with the Shatter Glass version. Um, and as of mold-wise between the two, the only change, again, as I mentioned earlier in the review, uh, is the beak. But other than that, just a heavy redeco, and I actually quite like this one. Before I had this one, my favorite was the Shadow Glass version, but he just took the spots for my favorite of the decos. So that's just my opinion. Let me know in the comment section down below, what is your favorite version or deco of Laserbeak the Siege, Netflix, or Shadow Glass? And here he is with the Siege, and same goes for the mold, just the change of the beak. Other than that, overall quite cool. And on the back, as you can see, everything really ends up in the same place. I do have to say, I actually do kind of like this one. I'm kind of back and forth between these two because I do like all the details, but sometimes it can be a bit overdone. I actually kind of like the simplified, just silver and red and black looks. So I'm kind of torn between the two, but that is pretty much it for laser beak. So let's actually move now on to Ravage. So let's take a look at the details of this mini con. So of course the base color is really just done in black. We have a ton of really cool text. We have Japan at the bottom. We have a 60 MC and an A. A very classic Decepticon symbol right there. It actually kind of looks like a sticker, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can actually see the hind blasters right there, which is pretty cool, done in silver. Overall, a pretty good cassette. As I mentioned before, I just do not like this mold. I really do hope Studio Series makes a modern uh, version of Ravage because this one just doesn't work for me. Again, I really don't have any complaints in the cassette mode. It overall looks pretty good. But as for the main uh, wolf uh, dog mode, just not working for me. But overall, a pretty cool looking cassette. Let's now get down to a few comparisons. Here he is with the Shatterglass version, which is my personal favorite of the decos. Uh, overall looking quite cool. And as of mold wise, again, I think for the Siege, the Shatter Glass in this version, they're all the same, just a heavy retool or a, a repaint, I mean. Overall, looking quite cool. And for one final comparison, here he is with the original Siege, which I have to say, I actually really do like that purple right in the center and the two Decepticon symbols looks quite cool. And just to have a back view, they all pretty much end up in the same area of the legs there. And that is pretty much it for comparisons and for the cassettes. So let's quickly get into a comparison with the Netflix Soundwave. So of course we have the Netflix Soundwave right here. 
And then we do have the shatter glass sound wave right here. And they overall do look very cool next to each other. Let me know in the comment section down below of all the sound waves we've gotten recently. You know, the, the Siege, the Netflix, the shatter glass, the Legacy, tons of them. Let me know which one is your favorite in the comment section down below. But overall, as of mold wise in this mode, there is no change. The accessories are the same. They store the exact same way. The only change with this figure, of course, is in the robot mode with the head sculpt. But other than that, they are pretty much the exact same figure. Really, it's just down to your personal preference of which deco you like more. I'm not really sure. I like, um, there's both pluses and minuses to each of them. I do have to say there is one kind of odd nitpick that I do have to mention. So, um, Hopefully you can see on camera, but kind of an odd section down here with this bar section. So there's actually some dark gray pieces on the side, but there's silver in the center. I think that looks a bit odd to me. I would have really rather had just the entire bottom bar section be solid silver or solid gray. Because as you can see on the shower glass one, I do apologize if it's exploding with brightness because most of the figure is white. Apologies about that, but hopefully you can see the entire bottom, uh, bottom bar here is a one solid color. And I think that looks a lot better. Also, the choice of gray they use there just kind of confuses me because it's kind of a grayish dirty green mixture i really don't know why they did that maybe that's just a mistake i don't know i would have rather it had been like this kind of light gray for the feet that is just my opinion other than that they do look very cool and just there i'm actually going to open both cassette tape decks just to show you there you go actually yes it is that one that one is the one that stuck hopefully you just saw that but overall a very cool looking boombox sets and just kind of a back view just to show you how both accessories, both figures store the accessories the exact same way. And that is pretty much it for the Boombox mode and the comparisons in the cassettes. So let's now get down to the final thoughts. Now for the final thoughts for the Transformers Netflix War for Cybertron Trilogy Voyager Class Soundwave. I think overall this is a pretty good figure. So if you're wondering the differences between this version and the Shatterglass version, the only difference, uh, of course, with Soundwave is the head sculpt. Of course, the Shatterglass version has a bandana. This one does not. As for, of course, the mini cons, Ravage is just a straight up repaint, uh, redeco. There's no mold changes that I know of. As for, of course, Laser Beak, the only change between mold with this one and the Shatterglass or Siege one, if you don't know, the Shatterglass and Siege one are the exact same old just a heavy repaint uh, but with this one there is a brand new beak or head sculpt whatever you want to call it um other than that mold change wise that's pretty much it as for accessories he comes with a pistol um a plain gray one, not a big fan, do not like that one. If you're unfamiliar with that weapon, it originally came with the Siege Soundwave quite a while back in the Siege line, and the main feature was that is you could grab all the accessories, combine them, and form this huge rifle. It was an okay feature, I really don't do it that much. I think I showed it once in the in the review for the Siege one, and maybe quite possibly the Legacy, but I never really do it on my own free time. I never even enjoy it. It's, it's just okay, it's fun, I, under, I, I understood the concept, I understood what they were going for, but it's just, I really don't like it that much. And to be quite honest, if they did include this pistol back here, I probably would have been fine. I really wouldn't have cared. Um, as for the other two accessories, he comes with his typical uh, shoulder cannon. Love that. And, of course, his handheld blaster. I'd say my only complaint with the shoulder cannon is it would be nice maybe if they had painted the bullets, uh, done a few paint apps where the bullets are, because with the Shatterglass version, he actually has some really nice metallic blue where the, the bullets are, and I think that looks super cool. So, honestly, I think they should have gone for that with this one. Of course, this version came out before that one, so maybe they just hadn't thought of done, doing that yet. So, maybe they could have painted them red or blue, something like that. That would have looked pretty cool. Maybe yellow. I would have been fine with that. That's just my opinion. Um, other than that, a pretty good figure. Of course, transformation-wise, exact same as the Shatterglass version. If you've never dealt with this mold before, I'd say you probably need the instructions about twice. Um, both modes, I'm quite impressed. Really like the Boombox mode. Again, the uh, accessory storage for this one, you can see they're all stored in the back. And I actually really do like the use of the accessories. So the two blasters actually act as structural support. So unfortunately, without them, the uh, Boombox mode does have a tendency to slightly lean back a little bit, which really doesn't bother you that much because it's barely noticeable. And I do typically store my figure in the robot mode anyway, so I barely ever have it in the alt mode. Um, but if it does bother you, you can do that, which is a pretty cool feature. And of course, you can store Laser Beak or Ravage in the chest uh, in the Boombox mode or robot mode, so it's a pretty cool feature. Um, 
I say other than that, really no other complaints for the Bamox one. I think it's overall pretty good. Um, down to, of course, the mini cons. I really like Laserbeak. This is probably my preferred deco or version of the Smolt. I think they nailed Laserbeak when they first made it in Siege. I think they really did a good job. Ravage, I've just never liked the Smolt. I think they should probably make a new version of the Smolt in the 86 Studio Series line because it's too boxy, too chunky and clunky. The transformation is not fun. I actually kind of loathe transforming it in the review or in my free time because it's just not fun. That's just my opinion. So hopefully they make a new modern version of that because they did it with um, 86 uh, Rumble and it, it was good. They did a really good job with that. You know, the original Siege version of Rumble didn't come with the blasters or the pile drivers and they gave us those four accessories. So I think they definitely did a good job there. So hopefully we get a new version of Ravage soon. I really like that. Um, as for, of course, the robot mode, really like the light piping in the head, cool red visor. Articulation, I'd say it's probably the only downside of the robot mode. There's a very limited ankle pivot and no wrist rotation. Of course, those two uh, cons or minuses to this figure I knew I was going to see or have because I had the Shadow Class version first, and that was the same problem. So I wasn't surprised or unexpected I saw that coming. I think the wrist rotation is kind of a given because he folds the hand in, so it's really part of the transformation of the wrist the, um, the ankle pivots, I think they probably could have changed. That's something they could have improved. I really don't think anything was stopping them, but that's just my opinion. There may be some specific reason why. Um, other than that, a good figure. Of course, it is hard to say I recommend this figure because it's a very hard to find figure. It's an exclusive, a Walmart exclusive part of the Netflix line. I pay $155 for this, so it's it's a pricey figure. It's really hard to find. So if you're on a budget and you just want to experience this mold, a version of this mold, I would suggest to buy the Shadowgloss one. You know, it, no, it's not the classic G1 deco that most people want. I do agree. There is some mold changes, but it's still a pretty good figure. I'm still actually torn in between these two of which ones I like more so that says something so i hope you enjoyed this review let me know in the comment section down below of course between the two versions of soundwave the shadow glass or the netflix one which one do you like more of course same for the laser beacon ravage which versions or decos of those do you like the most and i think that's pretty much it so i'll see you next time